Hey, Axe Fiends. It's a brand new year, and we got a brand new cordwood challenge this year. Stephen Edholm has handed down the cordwood challenge to be taken care of by Ben Scott. You need to go check his channel out and uh, check out his axe content and uh, look up the new rules for the new cordwood challenge. Um, I will mention it, it lasts all year now, and uh, it's got a few different variations on it. Uh, there's the bucking challenge, the felling challenge, and then now there's the uh, hewing challenge as well, which is really cool. So I've got a few axes out here. We're just doing a little show and tell today. A lot of interesting axes, some uh, familiar faces. Um, so I guess we'll get right down into it. So this is the Council Tool Bad Axe Boys Axe. It's their premium line boys axe made with 5160 steel with a premium handle and has a uh, satin, almost uh, polished finish. Um, not quite there, somewhere in between. But uh, it's a two and a quarter pound head. It's got a council logo on this side. USA on the other What to say about this axe so th the boys axe it's it's the first axe that that every boy should You know learn to use an axe with I guess I don't know where the name of that comes from but uh, I, I Can say that this axe did make me into an axe man of sorts um, now I'm going to go over these axes uh, and kind of relate it to the Quarterwood Challenge as best as I can uh, to give you guys some insight on, you know, what to look for if you're looking for an axe for the for the Quarterwood Challenge. Um, we're just going to use the term pulpwood axe for this. So, um, two and a quarter pound head, 5160 steel, holds an okay edge. I think the heat treat was botched on this one. Um, but otherwise, it's got a pretty good overall finish to it. It's a nice handle. There's no obvious run out on it in any danger spots. Uh, it was hung well. No gaps, nothing like that. I mean, it, it is a premium axe. Um, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it does have its limitations, however. I know this axe is recommended a lot to beginners, and I do think it's a pretty... A pretty good starting axe for most people. Um, it's just enough weight that you can do bigger work with it and uh, it's not uh, too heavy to where you feel like it's you, you don't have enough control. So the boys axe was uh, it's been carried by uh, the Forest Service for many years um, and this is kind of their with that and the Pulaski, they're uh, staple axes that they use. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a good pulplet axe, good starter pulplet axe. Um, but I think that you would be better served going with something that's a little bit heavier. Um, I, I always recommend going with a full size head for the Cordwood Challenge, uh, and I'm going to stick to that. and. Uh, I don't recommend anything over 32 inches in length, um, and that's for a couple reasons. Um, 32 inch handles are what I believe to be the perfect all around length for, I mean, for the general population, you know, anybody between five, four, and six, seven, somewhere around there. Uh, I know that's like a giant, but I'm just throwing numbers out there as I go. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, you don't want to you don't want to go over 32 because you're gonna be standing over your wood a lot. A lot of people think, yeah, I'm gonna be felling trees, so I need this big, long, heavy uh, felling axe to fell the tree with. That's you really don't need all of that. I mean, this little axe will fell a 12-inch tree in no time. Um, 
Now, whenever you get down to the bucking aspect of it, which is going to be like 90% of the cuts that you're doing, you're going to want that extra weight and you might want something that is a little bit better suited for the task that you're going to be doing. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of chopping and uh, the whole saying, a lighter axe can do more work is bullshit in my opinion. I'm sorry if it works for you, that's fine, but I just think that if you're not three pounds and up, it, it's really very taxing after a while because you don't have enough punch to knock those chips out. Um, one of the things about the boy's axe that I'm not very fond of as a pulpwood axe is that it's really flat. And you're going to see this. This is kind of a theme for a lot of new production axes, uh, especially the Swedish makes. Um, now, one thing the Swedes do that I really like is they actually offer handle lengths between 28 and uh, 32 inches for full-size heads. That's one of their biggest selling points, in my opinion. Uh, and it's something I overlooked when I first got into axes. Um, so, yeah, the flat cheeks is going to make your axe stick in the wood more, and it's not going to help pop that chip out of there. Um, the more surface area you know the steel touching the wood it's just going to make your axe stick more and that's going to become really tenuous over a long period of time because you're going to be out there chopping a good while um so yeah this is this is a good starting point but i'm gonna have to subtract some points for the flat cheeks um it's got nice thinness and they don't need a lot of work out of the box but uh, they do have room for improvement. So that's one thing you got to consider whenever you're getting into this is you do need to remove steel behind the edge to actually get good performance. Now on this axe here, I've taken this one back all the way back here um, to get it down to around 17 and a half degrees on the cheeks. It's recommended in uh, the axe book that you want something that's around 15 to 17 and a half degrees on the cheeks and then do about a 22.5 to 25 degree roll on the end, um, which is uh, pretty similar to what I've done with these two. They're a little bit more acute than that, but uh, you'll be cutting... Uh, hopefully you'll be cutting a lot of green wood. Um, the flat axes do good in green wood. So flat cheeks, not a big fan. Okay. Another thing, um, I've got this classic Michigan double bit by Council Tool. This is from their standard line. It's been modified a little bit. I've hollowed out these phantom bevels a little bit, which actually turned out to be a failed experiment because this axe is way too flat. And one of my biggest gripes with Council is their quality control. There is actually an S-shaped curve to this double bit, but it actually lines up okay with the pole or the, the haft. Um, I actually bought this hand this axe with this handle because I wanted to see something with terrible run out how long it will last and uh, I've beat the shit out of this thing and it hasn't failed me yet so you know handle grain is not as big of a deal as people make it out to but it is nice to have whenever you get it um so there's a new aspect of the challenge that is hewing and if you're standing on top of logs a lot and you're going to be joggling a lot like a lot a lot yeah a 36 is fine um, and if you just prefer using a 36 by all means go for it I just don't like getting hit in the balls all the time whenever I'm trying to stand over a log and chop it's not pleasant it makes it really unenjoyable for me I'm 6'2 and it's just it's too much um, you really want the axe to hang down Okay, and almost touch the ground whenever you're uh, 
your arms extended and uh you'll see a lot of guys like on bushcraft channels and stuff they'll mention the whole um you know from the inside of your arm to your hand is the proper handle length that's very accurate um and you can kind of go shorter than that and i've got some i've got an example of that over here so council please please make some axes on <laughs> shorter handles with full size heads they're we want them the european market has got that like covered they are killing you guys with that if you guys offered a jersey pattern on a 32 inch handle i would have one right now i would um instead i've chosen to put my money somewhere else so oh i almost forgot so on the i was talking about thinning out the cheeks so you're gonna want a couple good files or one doesn't really matter so right here is a velorb this, these are made in Sweden. Uh, this is a Swiss cut, which is a double cut file. It's a smooth file, so this is like a finishing file. Um, this will leave a really fine edge if you know how to cross hatch with your file and you have the right touch. Uh, that just takes some time to uh, get the skill to do it, but really nice and hard files uh, definitely worth the money I got this from axminster.uk as well as the handles uh, if you've been looking into files I'm sure you've noticed that file handles are expensive here and I don't know why that is these are actually made in England and they were only 250 a piece so the file was nine dollars and five bucks for the two handles um, so that was pretty cheap actually and over here I've got a Sun Valley Ski Tools super chrome file these are both 10 inch files this is a single cut file but what's interesting about this is these are actually made for uh, Olympic ski teams to use on their racing skis um, and the difference between this and that file is not only is it single cut, but it's chromed. So it's extremely hard. It doesn't, uh, whenever you're filing, you'll get these metal shavings that'll end up getting in between the grooves and, uh, they'll actually embed themselves into the file, but that hard chroming actually prevents that from happening. And, uh, with a file you usually need a, a file card i don't have mine out here with me right now but with this i can just tap it and they'll just fall out of there but if you want one file to rule them all this is the one right here um it's just coarse enough and just fine enough to where it'll do a really uh it'll remove a lot of steel but it, it also leaves a pretty fine uh, result after you're done so these can be found on Amazon for around $25 I know that sounds steep for a file but you pretty much got a file for life if you get one of these uh, recommended by uh, Bushcraft Sisyphus uh, aka Lane Packwood very cool solution to that problem okay so here's the big daddy right here this is a Tuatahi work axe, okay? And it's the model with the wings ground out. I've actually polished mine a bit um, just to uh, resist corrosion a bit more, and I just think it looks cool. Um, but the grinds are just spectacular on these axes. You can kind of see that, like, holographic look to it just beautiful so this is a monster of an axe it's you can see it's pretty wedge shaped but uh it's got those wings ground out so those are relief points and believe it or not it's actually got a curve to it so it does have a high center line to uh help pop those chips out and uh, uh release from the cut a bit easier 
Uh, this has a 20 degree chisel grind on it. Um, and I'm not even joking you. I've not had to sharpen this axe since I've gotten it. And I've used this a lot. Whatever custom tool steel that they're using on these axes in the heat treat process is superior to most knife steels that I've seen. These are treated the same way that the racing axes are, um, but these make for great training axes. So this works really great in tandem with a lighter axe because uh, a six pound head is gonna wear you out super quick. Uh, I found my sweet spot is around four to four and a half pounds, but um, this is a seven pound overall weight with the handle and it'll wear you out quick. But what it is good for is if you need to remove a lot of wood really quickly, um, like say you have a bigger log that's over, you know, a foot or so, like a foot and a half, this will just remove huge chips of wood. Uh, once you get your technique down. But awesome axe. Highly recommend to Atahi. Um, if you're a beginner and you're thinking about getting one of these. I would recommend working your way up to this weight. And uh, save your money for a bit. And sit on this. Because these are extremely dangerous. So sharp. So sharp. Like, I can cut paper with this right now and shave with it if I wanted to, <laughs> and uh, I've chopped plenty with it. It's ridiculously uh, tough. Um, beautiful handle on it. Perfect grain orientation all the way up to the eye. Uh, it's got a roll pin on it. Just a beautiful piece. I get the most questions about that axe. Um, if if you got any more questions about it, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. So these here, this is like my end all solution for pulpwood axes. These are the quintessential Basque axes. These can be found all over Basque country in Spain. They've got a really rich culture of chopping wood and using axes. And these axe head designs are products of all of that chopping that they've done over time. And, uh, you know, just the time that they've put into it is, is amazing. And uh, these head designs are actually hundreds of years old. And they're still used to this day and for good reason. Um, so I'll give you a view of the geometry of it. As you can see... It's got a fairly wedge shape to it, but it's got very narrow bevel geometry on it. And that comes like that straight out of the box. I mean, these are ready to go out of the box. This is my most highly recommended axe for bush crafters, for people doing the cordwood challenge. It doesn't matter. Um, high center line, 17 and a half degree bevel and cheek geometry. It, it's just a perfect chopping axe and like I said 90% of your cuts are going to be bucking so why not get an axe that was made for that they've got a slip fit handle which is the safest and most effective way to hang an axe um, and a lot of people worry about you know replacing this handle I mean look at it it's not very complicated it's just you know you got to make this part thin enough to where it can get through the eye and this part thick enough to where it will retain the head. Uh, one mistake that people make whenever they get these is they try to pop the handle off and they start sanding all this good curl and compression that's happening up here at the top and they end up loosening their heads. Uh, I don't recommend that so <laughs> uh, anyway this one right here is a 1.75 overall weight uh, that's in kilograms so um, the head weight is around three to three and a half pounds somewhere in that ballpark um, a little bit light for the bigger stuff but it'll split it'll cut it'll do anything uh, I usually carry an axe out for splitting specifically. 
because uh, I don't want to use my good cutters uh, for splitting. Um, and then we've got this big one here. This is like my ideal pulp wood axe, like the one. I can use it for pretty much everything. It's uh, the head's just about four and a half pounds, and uh, it, man, it's got that long bit on it, and it just makes connecting those cuts super easy. The handle is uh, 75 centimeters. Oh, that's something I forgot to mention on that one. This is a 65 centimeter handle, and I need to show this so this doesn't freak anyone out if they decide to get one of these. I mean, this is a pretty short handle. Um, this is something you would find on like a Scandinavian forest axe, okay? But with this palm swell, you can index it. Sorry for my pale, gross legs. You can index it down here, and when my arm's fully extended, it's touching the ground. This is the perfect length for for chopping. Um, I really uh I really want to get one of the two kilogram versions of this, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, this one's 75 centimeters, around a four to four and a half pound head. That's gotta be over a five inch bit right there. If we compare it to the Tuatahi. Ooh. Yeah. So it, this, the Tuatahi's got an eight inch bit. So yeah, it's six, six or so. Yeah. Anyway, they don't come this polished out of the box. I actually, it's got some oil dried on it right now, but I think they cover the head in some kind of hardening oil. And uh, I just take that off with some steel wool and then use some metal polish on it to, uh, Keep it nice and shiny. These axes clean up super well. <clears throat> and just like the two Atahi, I've not had to sharpen these axes since I got them. And I've chopped lots with them. Uh, they're just excellent, excellent axes. The heat treat is amazing. I do not know how the blacksmith makes 1045 steel cut and and act like not cut i mean retain its edge as well as something like this i mean it, it's hard to tell the difference really like it, it's just incredible um but yeah that's my thoughts on axes for for pulp wood axes and uh there's your files you may want to consider getting one of these if you're going to be sharpening your axes uh, these are handy to have around. I had a buddy 3D print me one, uh, so this was free actually. But they're about ten dollars online if you want to get like one for your keychain. Um, that right there, that is the biggest and most important thing, aside from experience, that you need going into the cordwood challenge. Okay, so read this book again and again as many times as you need to retain this information because some of this stuff may save your life out there. This is dangerous work and it requires a lot of uh, premeditation and just trust me on that. Buy this book, read it enjoy it it's fun it's informative i mean what more could you ask it's awesome we like axes you know you should like reading it so another thing that i'd consider is some cut resistant gloves i cut my fingers a lot last year and uh i really wish i would have had these these come in uh like five packs or three packs you know, depending on how many you buy, they get a little bit cheaper. But these are called the Great White. Um, I like this particular model. I don't know why. Just They just feel the best to me. They've got a polyurethane coating on them, which actually 
doesn't it doesn't inhibit your movement on the axe handle from moving up and down on it um, which is really nice and it keeps your hand safe from cuts and uh, splinters and uh, yeah just good to have um, let's see if there's anything else that you might want to bring out there I don't have it with me right now but consider bringing a folding saw I've got a, a Silky Big Boy 2000. Uh, you want something that's over a foot long because if you're doing a cut that's especially dangerous, you might want to do the back cut with the saw because, uh, you know, barber chairs can happen. It can kick back on you, all kinds of stuff. So uh, saw, the hand saw is good to have out there. And it, yes, you can use a hand saw on the challenge this year. Uh, it, that's been, we've been able to do that all this time, but, um, just hasn't been clear to some people. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I, if I missed anything, uh, just let me know. Um, but... Most importantly, don't forget to bring a towel. Alright, love you.